For decades, we've been talking about how to make space truly accessible. It's very difficult for most people to imagine themselves blasting off in a rocket. Balloons are a way to get people up there in this incredibly gentle way, so you can spend hours at a time really absorbing this planet that we inhabit from that vantage point of the blackness of space. That was the initial inspiration for Worldview. Advisory 2 is a three-acre miniature version of planet Earth that is entirely sealed and simulates how we might live on another planet. When I was in Advisory 2, I got completely fascinated with the idea of connection. As I went about my day, I knew that my breath was providing the CO2 for all the plants around me so that they could live, and that they were providing me all the oxygen for me to live. The experience of living in Biosphere 2 really did give me that sense of the wholeness of the planet that we live on. It's very akin to experiences that astronauts have when they're looking at the world all at once. And to see planet Earth from space for the first time, you'd see we're all connected here. It was that experience that we really wanted to give people. And that was really the driving force behind Worldview. exciting things about balloons is that it is steeped in history. What we're doing is taking this ancient technology, the very first vehicle that humans ever flew in, and transforming it with 21st century technologies to make it into a spacecraft. The balloon on this table is part of what we call a stratolite. So think of it as a satellite, but in the stratosphere. And it flies above 99% of the atmosphere at the very edge of space. The environment up there is incredibly extreme. You've got all this UV light pounding on the stratolite. You've got all of these temperature differences. And as it goes up into these very cold environments, the material actually gets even tougher. A lot of the technical challenges that we face involve bringing something the size of the capsule to the inner space. That means we need a lot of lift. So we have a balloon that's carrying this to, to the edge of space that's basically, when it's fully inflated, the size of an NFL football stadium. But we also have to come back. We're going to do that through the use of a very, very large steerable parachute. That allows us to land this spacecraft back at a pinpoint spot on the ground. Even just five years ago, we couldn't have done what we're doing today. But really is being able to take advantage of all the technologies that we have today and all the advancements that's happened in the last 20 years and apply it to balloons. And in a couple of days, we'll take it out and we'll do some test flights. It takes a small army to launch our spacecraft. That's not only at the launch, it's in the design and the build and looking at all the safety procedures. It's a team sport, if you will.
When I looked out of the window of the International Space Station, I saw our planet. And in some way, being physically detached from the only world I ever had known made me feel deeply interconnected with everyone on it. I think a lot of our perceived differences blur into insignificance. There's profound implications for our future if we take a big picture, a long-term view of our planet. Now, but worldview, I can literally transport people to the edge of space where I believe that many will have a profound uh, transformative experience. a unique perspective that comes from being at that vantage point in space. You can see the wholeness of our planet. You see over the horizon. You see over boundaries. You really understand in a way that is so hard to do from the ground that we all live on one planet. And so my personal hope is that many people that we take up to experience this will take that experience and do something incredibly powerful with it. Fighting fire with fire. Conventional wisdom says that's an exercise in futility. But at GE, we don't pay much attention to conventional wisdom. So we're gonna conduct an experiment on Jason here to prove that you can fight fire with fire. Or, more accurately, with the sound of fire. The theory is intense bursts of sound cool flames, extinguishing them. Sound crazy? Well, actually, GE uses sound in a lot of innovations, including a new, more precise kind of mammogram that uses ultrasound instead of x-rays. But first, we need fire sounds. We'll need to mix these fire sounds to create the perfect frequency and intensity. We'll aim this sound at the fire with these modified speakers. Lots of them. Ready, Jason? Light him up. you can fight fire with fire. Sound. And if we can fight fire with fire, imagine the other impossible things we can do. Uh. 